Daniel was a young man who had been taken captive by the enemies of his people. He and three friends were in a foreign country as prisoners. They didn't know what would happen to them or if they would ever get back home again, but they knew God would care for them. Daniel was a young man who loved God and lived for God. Three times a day, Daniel prayed to God, kneeling by his open window. Daniel was in the midst of people who didn't love God. They didn't like him to pray. In the new country, the food that the king wanted Daniel and his friends to eat was rich and fancy, not at all like what Daniel had eaten at home. He and his friends felt that God wanted them to continue to eat the simple, healthful food to which they were accustomed. I'm afraid I will get into trouble if you don't eat this food, say the man who was in charge of the captives. What if you get thin and weak? Try it just 10 days. Let us have just vegetables and water for 10 days. Then you can look at us and see if we look weak and thin, Daniel said. We think we'll be stronger. The person in charge of them agreed. And sure enough, in the 10 days they looked better than the captives who had been eating the van seafood. God gave these for Hebrew men knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom because they wanted to please him and he had a job for them. After many years passed, Daniel became an assistant to the king and became the first president. The other officers and princes wanted to find something against Daniel so they could accuse him before the king. Daniel followed God so closely that his enemies could not find anything wrong with which to accuse him. They finally decided that the only way they could trap Daniel would be to find something wrong with his worship of God. So they decided on a clever plan. They would get the king to pass a law that people must pray to the king when they wanted something. The king didn't realize that this would mean no one could pray to God. He just was thinking about himself and so he agreed to pass the law. Of course, Daniel knew about the law. What do you think he will do about it? He had previously been opening his window toward Jerusalem three times a day as he knelt, prayed, and gave thanks to God. Should he continue to do this? He surely knew that he would be reported to the king if he did. In fact, Daniel may have been aware that the officer had tricked the king into making this law so that they could accuse Daniel before the king. Daniel decided to continue praying to his God. He went into his house with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He got down on his knees three times a day as he prayed and gave thanks before his God, just as he had previously done. Do you think the king heard about it? Of course he did. The officer found Daniel there and they immediately went to the king. Now they could get Daniel in trouble. Remember the decree you signed, O king? Remember the law says that for 30 days no one can ask anything of anyone but you. You said that if a person pray to anyone but you, he will be thrown into the dance of lion. We have found someone who didn't obey that law, O king. Yes, it is true. That is the law I made and signed, said the king. And it cannot be changed now. Who has disobeyed it? Daniel, who is one of the captives from Judah, has not obeyed your law. He had been praying three times a day to his God. Do you think the king was angry with Daniel? No, he was not. He was angry with himself. He knew now that he had been tricked into signing a bad law. He wanted to deliver Daniel. He didn't want to carry out the law that he had made. He tried until sunset to think of something to do to save Daniel, but he could do nothing. The law could not be changed. Then the man came again and said to the king, You know, you will have to carry out the law that you made. No law the king has signed may be changed. The king sadly agreed, and he asked them to bring Daniel. Daniel was brought and cast into the den of lions. The king didn't give up hope. He knew how much Daniel loved God, and he knew that Daniel believed God would help him. Daniel, 
May your God that you have served so faithfully deliver you. A stone was brought and laid over the lion's den, and the king had to seal it with his own ring. What a miserable night, the king span. All he could think of was Daniel in the den with the lions. Was Daniel safe? Would God really protect Daniel's? Early the next morning, the king hurried down to the dens of lion. What had happened? Would Daniel be alive or dead? Daniel, he called. Daniel, oh Daniel, servant of the living God, is your God whom you serve all the time able to deliver you from the lions? He almost held his breath as he waited for an answer. While the lion roared and jumped, was Daniel possibly still alive after a night with the lions? He heard something, a voice. It was Daniel. Oh, king, live forever. My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth, and they have no hurt me. God knew, O king, that I did it. nothing hurt you, that I was innocent of doing wrong. The king was so happy. Daniel was alive. His God was real. God had not let the hungry lion touch Daniel. What a wonderful God. Bring him up out of the lion's den. The king shouted to his soldiers, He's alive. Eagerly he watched as Daniel appeared out the lion's den. There was not a mark on him, nor a stretch from a big paw, nothing. Daniel looked as healthy as when he was put into the lion's den. Because Daniel had believed God, God had taken care of Daniel. The king shouted, Bring those men who accused Daniel, gather them up with their families, they shall all go into the lion's den. Quickly it was done, but God didn't protect this wicked man who had him. The lions had the mastery of them, and they were destroyed. Daniel was given back his high position and did a wonderful work for God. God revealed to Daniel much about the things that would happen in the world. Daniel was even told some wonderful truths about the coming of Christ in glory.